Hi, I'm Ben Bruss. I'm Matt Coyle. And I'm Melissa Lawton. And today we're going to explain how to convert and understand hexadecimal numbers, as well as describe some applications in which they're used. People often talk about binary numbers, which are base 2. Hexadecimal numbers are base 16 representation of numbers, which means they go from 0 to 15. The numbers you use on a day-to-day -day basis are called decimal numbers, which are base 10. For example, if we have the decimal number of 13, that's the hexadecimal number of D, and the binary number of 1101. This handy-dandy conversion chart is used for converting between decimal, hexadecimal, and binary representations of numbers from 0 to 15. All of the hexadecimal and decimal numbers are the same until you get to the decimal digits above 9. At that point, the two-digit numbers are represented by letters starting with 10 as A, 11 as B, and so on and so forth until you get to 15, which is F. So converting from decimal to hexadecimal, for the decimal number 4, you look on the chart, we get the hexadecimal number 4. For the decimal number of 10, we get the hexadecimal number of A. To do this process in reverse, given the hexadecimal number of B, we find the decimal number of 11. And the hexadecimal number of 5, we get the decimal number of 5. So now Ben is going to explain a practical application of this for larger numbers. Let's do a more complex example where we convert 196 to hexadecimal. First, we convert from decimal to binary, and then we convert from binary to hexadecimal. In order to convert 196 to binary, you must break it into powers of 2. The easiest way to do this is to create the following chart which shows the powers of 2 for 8 bits. This will help you in determining the binary representation of this number. First, look at 196 and say, how many times does 128 fit into 196? It goes in one time. So you write down a 1 and subtract 128 from 196, which leaves 68. So then you say, how many times does 64 go into 68? One time, write down a 1, subtract 64 from 68, which leaves 4. For the next 3, 32 does not go into 4, 16 does not go into 4, and 8 does not go into 4, which leaves all zeros. When you get to 4, say how many times does 4 go into 4, which is obviously one time, which leaves a zero for the rest of the bits. So put all these numbers together to get 11000100. Now converting the binary number into hexadecimal, split the binary number into two groups of four bits and make sure to keep them in order. The first group is 1100 and the second group is 0100. Take these and put them into mini binary conversion charts, which leaves 8, 4, 2, and 1 at the top. Put the binary number into each chart. For each bit, multiply the 1 or 0 times the number above it in the chart and add up the results. 1 times 8 is 8, 1 times 4 is 4, 2 times 0 is 0, 1 times 0 is 0, and you add them up to get 12. Do the same thing for the other group of numbers of 0, 1, 0, 0, which gives 4. So you use the numbers you just found to look up in the table what the hexadecimal representation of each number is. You find that 12 is C and 4 is 4, which gives the explosive result that 196 is C4 in hexadecimal. In order to reverse this process, first we convert each hex number to binary. Then we smoosh them all together, and then we convert the full number back to decimal. So let's do an example of that. Convert E2 to decimal. E is 1110, and 2 is 0010 in binary. Smoosh that all together, which gives 1110010. Put that into the binary conversion chart. Simply do 128 times 1 plus 64 times 1 plus 32 times 1 plus 16 times 0 and on until the end of the table, which gives the result of 226. So, 226 is decimal for E2. Now, Melissa is going to explain why hexadecimal is important in the real world. IPv6 is the new version of the IP address, replacing the 32-bit IPv4 addresses with a 128-bit version to provide more options. This is necessary because every computer or device that accesses the internet needs an IP address. 
The world has already run out of IPv4 addresses, so devices have to share IP addresses. This means that you may get a different one each time that you get online. Another type of identifier is a MAC address, which is the permanent address for a network connecting device. These addresses cannot repeat because each connected device needs a unique permanent identifier established at its creation similar to a social security number. Basically, hexadecimal numbers are used to represent large numbers for anything where there are near endless possibilities. To show how effective this is, IPv6 provides 3.4 times 10 to the 38 possible addresses using only 32 hexadecimal digits. This is compared to 4.3 times 10 to the 9 possible IPv4 addresses represented by 12 decimal digits. Thank you, everybody. Have a fun.